Tackle Chip Friday. Tackle Chip Friday. I'm waiting to be picked up here on the Virginia side. Tidal Potomac this weekend. Event on Sunday. And doing a little bit of pre-fishing. And here's the thing, guys. I'm going to give you two tips. Uh, a tackle tip and a title tip. Okay? Let's start with a title tip. The title tip is if, you, if you're in a boating event, it's obsolete because you're going to be launching from Leesylvania. You're going to be launching from Smallwood. You're going to be launching um, from the, the established ramps, and everybody's launching from the same ramp. So it's not as much of an issue. If you're in a kayak competition, it's very, very important to understand the tides because you get to pick where you launch from. So you want to make sure that you're launching, okay, in an area, potentially, that you're going to have the longest time in the high tide, okay, for fishing, right? I mean, and, and then look at what your low tide is. Because remember, these are very, very different. The, the tidal Potomac is a massive fishery. The tides are very different. So if you're launching from the Maryland side, typically typically your tide is 45 minutes, 50, 45 to 50 minutes different from the Virginia side, okay? Virginia side can have an earlier high tide than the Maryland, depending on where you're launching in Maryland. For example, if you're launching in Mattawoman Creek. It is considerably different than over on the Virginia side. So look at those tide windows, especially with your launch time. If your launch time is at, you know, use typically these kayak events launch times are 6 a.m. Um, that's the high tide tomorrow. Okay, for a lot of the fishery. Uh, it's going to be around 6, 6.15 in the morning. Tomorrow morning, you're going to be launching right at high tide. Um, and then look at your low tide, mid-morning. mid, mid morning, Okay, because you know what that low tide, how that low tide bite can be a very, very tough bite. And so, where you decide to launch from, whether or not you have a motor or not, if you're a kayak angler, is another 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 issue. But now most events have have motors. But you want that's a very very this year right now it's not as much. But sometimes you could be launching at 6 a.m. and the tide's not until high tide's like at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. Right? Or you have a tournament and the high tide is at 4 a.m. like or 4:30 like yesterday. Okay, four o'clock in the morning. Okay before you're even out on the water, right? And so you're getting out on the water as the tide is dropping. So just understand that, understand that where you where you decide to launch from um, when you're picking a launch um, on a fishery like the Potomac River, it, it, you know, in an event like that, it you should, you should look at the tides. You should look, so you're getting where you were launching from and understand where the high and low tides. Definitely want to understand where the low tides are because you don't want to get caught later on in the afternoon. Low tides, low tide the past few days has really been in like lunchtime. Like, you know what I mean? Like it hasn't really, and then wait like five, like wait later on. Um, high tide again at like five. So it hasn't really been an issue this week, I don't think for anybody, but it can be. Um, and so keep that up. So always check on your low tide too. So when you're coming back, you know what you're dealing with. The tackle tip, okay, tackle tip. One of, the one of the things I've realized in winter fishing, especially if you're a smallmouth fishing uh, fishing guy and you fish a lot in the wintertime, a lot of largemouth guys do not fish in the wintertime um, around in my area. It's mostly smallmouth guys because we're crazy. And um, is slowing down. And we're going to go out today because Steve found um, what he suspects to be beds up north. Um and so there are going, he wants to check that out. Um, he, um, and, and, and see about the males moving up. The water temperature is a lot warmer up there. Um, and the cycle just kind of changes over a little faster than say down towards, uh, you know, the lower end or middle river really, uh, of the tidal Potomac. But we're going to talk jigs here. Okay. And obviously you'll know if you do any YouTube search, YouTube video, because it's true. I mean, it's not a stereotype. It's true. The black and blue jig is, is a predominant fish catcher on the Potomac. Just just Google it. It just is. It always has been. It'll probably always will be because of the forage species in, in the tidal Potomac. Um, one of my favorites and I'm going to be throwing today. Now the difference with me is uh, for when I fish for largemouth uh, on the tidal Potomac for the most part, I'm going to keep my guard. Okay. Um, a lot of guys cut them down. I cut them down for my smallmouth just because I, they help my hookups um, by cutting down some of these guards. Um, but Beautiful black and blue jig. This is what I'm going to throw today. And then I also have a, what I always like, is I like to change the color up a little bit. Chartreuse. You can also do a little bit of red. A lot of people sleep on red. I don't know why that is, but um, chartreuse color jig, but the trailer's the same. Black and blue. Okay, jig. Now, the tip 
is the change in your line, okay? Um, my experience, what I have found, is changing my line, and I've done this and tested this, and I've tested this with others, with three brands, Seaguar, Sunline, and P-Line, okay? Um, in terms of lines and jig fishing, okay? Um, and what I tried one time, by accident, sometimes you learn a lot of these tricks, these hacks and these tips by accident, because no one's out there coaching you, telling you to do some of these things, and it just happens. I picked up, I picked up the wrong rod, okay? Well, the right rod, but the wrong rod line, okay? Um, that was spooled with P-Line topwater, okay? Which is this right here, P-Line topwater, okay? Which you guys know, if you follow this channel, I throw all the time with my jerk baits, okay? That's what I throw, P-Line topwater, okay? Um, and I got it in like five, four different weights, okay? But I, I you know, P-Line topwater, right? What just so happened, I picked up that rod and I tied a jig on, okay? And, there, and the rest is history, okay? Because what happens is with this with this P-line topwater, okay, um, is the buoyancy of this line impacts the rate of fall for your jig, okay? And me, being a smaller guy, you know, I don't really have that many jigs bigger than this. I mean, because I use this for when I go largemouth fishing. Most of my jigs are eighth and a quarter, right? So, so they're already light, right? They don't have a heavier, a heavier jig head, right, for that rate of fall, to fall really fast already, okay? These are a little heavier, all right? But that line, after you drop it, okay, after you throw it out there, and you're sitting there, remember your rock adjacent, right? Your bottom adjacent, you're working that jig on the bottom, right? Okay, but as you lift your rod tip up and you move that jig, it's the line also, that buoyancy of that line in the water, that's also going to impact how that jig falls, okay? And it's, re and it's rate of fall back down, if you're allowing it to fall back down, okay? Um, the other option that I do is, again, another presentation, and I've never done this, I've never done this presentation for largemouth, um, but I do it for smallmouth all the time, is again, I use this P-Line topwater with a jaw dropper for first gen fishing. Jaw droppers have an erratic move, but your bottom placement, right? You're moving it along the bottom, okay? And that's what you want. It's an erratic action. And that line, because of its buoyancy, kind of keeps it up. It creates a little bit more crazy. Um, did that on the New River recently, okay? Um, so it... These are just little little tips that you can do and try, okay, and see if they work for you. But again, go with a a top water. Some you know if you maybe you, maybe you're a Sunline guy or you're or you're a Seaguar guy or you're or whatever. You're not a you know, but you can find one of their um one of theirs uh that is made for top water, copolymer or whatever that's for top top water fishing, okay, and just try that out one time when you're out and see how that changes for me in the pre pre-spawn we're still 50 some degrees between 50 and 55 we're not in full spawn yet we're not in all that but they are moving they are more attracted to like a some of the mo more moving baits but it's not like necessarily like a top order bite like i know my smallie guys right now they're not getting a top order bite okay it's still we're still getting there okay the water temperatures still need to come up a little bit um but while you're waiting for that you can throw these jigs okay um you know, and another jig, another one I'm going to try today, and I have no idea. Again, this is it's the beauty of fishing. I have no idea, but I'm going to do the exact same thing. If you watch my previous videos this week for the Tidal Potomac, I've talked about how noise, the common denominator in all the baits catching fish this week has been noise. Lipless crankbaits, knockers and rattles, okay? Um... You know, anything with like a noise, a knocker, square bill crankbaits with a knocker, right? So I'm going to roll that same P-Line top order. I'm going to roll with this, and it's got a rattle, okay? It's got a rattle to it, 
all right? It's got the paddle tail. It's got a rattle to it. Longer weed guard here. Um, and I'm going to see if that hold that rattle holds true. And how I'm going to do that is this one has a rattle. Again, black and blue, right? This one, just the weight. Okay? So no rattle. Okay? No rattle. Rattle. Okay? Plus, you got that nice little trailer hook on there. You see that? Sometimes they may... And now, if you're getting up there... Again, I'm going to tell you another thing. Another, another tip three. I have no idea what's going to be happening with the males, right? Or the females during this time frame. But if you're around beds, even early on before the females come in, you, those bass will swipe at stuff. Okay? And so, that's why that's a good option. Okay? Is that trailer. Okay? Um, hook. Because they may just swipe at it. Because they don't want it anywhere near where they're making a nest, right? They may just swipe at it. And when they swipe at it, right? That trailer, you got a good opportunity for a hookup, okay? And so, that's what I'm going to be working on today a little bit. Um, trying some trying some stuff out. Um, I'm gonna, obviously, I'm going to pack out the same baits I've had this week to continue on that that pattern that's been working this week with the lipless crankbaits and the square bills, all with rattles and knockers. Um, but I kind of want to test it a little bit further. Um, you know, we're going to go up further north. Um, you know, and there's a lot more docks up there. There's a lot more docks along, um, a couple of the areas too, that I know we're going to hit, which is why I want to, um, I'm going to roll with the jigs, but that's just, again, that's just a simple tip you can try that's been effective for me. And it's simply pairing your jig. Okay. During certain conditions, um, where you want to slow it down a little bit more, your rate of fall. Okay, obviously it works in the winter time, but we're still in that early pre-spawn stage, pre-spawn stage. So, you know, pair your jig again with a top water P-line or a top water line that you have that's, that you use for your jerk baits um, and such and try that out as opposed to, you know, maybe going with your straight fluorocarbon or, you know, uh, mono or something like that that you might normally do. Um, just pull the change up and, uh, see what happens.